Tonight we welcome the Sheffield Senators to the Dragon's Den. The Senators have secured their spot in the Labour Conference and have rightly earned their place at the playoff table. Deeside, on the other hand, know that the best that they can finish is the unlucky fifth spot and no postseason action for them this year. But don't for one minute think that this has a nothing in it to play for game. These sides know each other well and expect some intense heated action. Long time rivals, Sheffield are going to be moving up to the Morley Conference next year. Always been a particularly tough game between these two throughout the seasons that we've seen. And don't be fooled by the league standings. They may be set with uh, Sheffield at third and the Dragons taking the fifth place spot. Both teams, they're going to be playing for pride tonight. I'm certainly expecting fireworks tonight, Dave, but it's vital that the Dragons try and stop these Sheffield Senators from putting any points on the board early on. If you look at um, the Dragons during training this week, they've been concentrating on their power play. We know that they've been looking at their penalty kill unit. So expect a, bo a boost to their special teams um, if they're needed. Well, it's certainly, certainly important for the Dragons to find out who's that red button in the Senators' side. And uh, Jaeger is certainly one of those guys, number 15. Watch out for him. He likes to spend a lot of time in the warmth of the penalty box. The Dragons could press that button tonight. It could pay dividends for them. Well, the question is, do we owe Thomas Mitrick another check at the end of tonight's game? Merriweather, you've got to watch out for this guy. <laughs> so, you look at the top scorers now for Sheffield. Number three, Josh Gent. What a great season he's had. 34 goals, 38 assists. And number 20, Nathan Parks Britain. 30 goals, 39 assists. Real powerhouses there for that team. Really a, a good boost to their forward lines. Well, it's going to be vital that the Dragons close these guys down and stop them from scoring. Um, you don't get up in the rankings unless you're putting the points on the board. And these guys are good at it. So let's hope the Dragons can do a good job and play very defensive and stop them. This being the last game of the season, we spoke to the Dragons coach, Steve Fellows, ahead of the game, just to get a review of the season, see how he thought things went. It was Kate Groves, our reporter, who went and spoke to him earlier today. Let's take you over to Kate right now. Hi, we're here to do an exclusive Drop the Puck interview with Steve Fellows, coach of the Deeside Dragons. Uh, Steve, we're going to do a bit of a review of the season mm -hmm. and talk about how, how it's gone. My first question is, with the loss of players like Jordan Van and Sean Kippen, how do you feel the additions to the squad have developed as D-side players? Well, it was a real miss for the for the team, really, to, to lose them type of players. Jordan um, was one of the fans' favourite, and so was Kippen, two huge characters um, on the team. And um, and, and both um, players that got us points and uh, won us games. So, um, to lose, uh, we you know, we kind of planned that Sean was going to be going back to Whitley Bay and we, we were prepared for that. Um, I think Jordan's situation was very different and we lost him very late on in the day to, to uh, Blackburn. So, uh, yeah, it was quite challenging for us and, um, you know, at the beginning of the season we sort of struggled for fixtures and we had some fixtures planned and then they, they, the teams we were due to play dropped out so we didn't have any pre-season friendlies. Um, some of the guys really wanted a rest after the season, and uh, we struggled to sign guys. You know, really late on in the day trying to sign some guys, but we we managed to to replace the guys that were, that moved on with the likes of Brim Roberts, who's been fantastic for us in in D with his um, with his goals and his hits, um, and also his brother, and also like uh, the likes of Paul Davis, who's um, who's very if I. Comparing to one of our previous players is like a Ben Simister. He's mm -hmm. like a workhorse out there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we have tried our best really to to replace. But over the last couple of years, we have seemed to leak quite a lot of um, a lot of talent out of the team and and um, only bring m the minimum into the squad. So at times, you know, when we played Solihull a couple of weeks ago, we went there bare bones with ten skaters. So um, it's you know it's been a challenging year for us this year. And on a positive, there's been a big injection of youth into the team with with players like uh, Meadows and Kennedy and Jolly becoming team regulars. How have they progressed mm. this season? I think uh, if we're looking at the, the, the year we first formed a couple of seasons ago where we brought a lot of talent into the squad and we had probably 22 senior hockey players and we didn't really have any room for youth coming into the, into the um, squad and getting ice time. And it was something we reflected upon because... 
Um, when these when we lost these players, we didn't have you know it impacted on our academy and the uh, lads coming through. So it was uh, an area we wanted to focus on after that first year, and um, it's 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 been healthy because we have seen the likes of Ross Kennedy coming through. We've seen uh, Dom Jolly this year stepping up and getting reg you know quite a lot of ice time in there, and um, you know and Jack Meadows who was. Um, a prolific goal scorer for uh, under 18s level, and he's settling in and getting regular ice time for us. So, um, the way I think we'd look, we'd like to see D uh, decide at the moment is a development hockey club where there's opportunities for youth to come into the squad and get regular shifts and ice time. Picking up on one of those players, Ross Kennedy got <coughs> called up to the England squad. What's it like mm. for decide to have that national representation? Well, it's marvellous, isn't it? You know, it sort of puts us on the map and um, it speaks a, a lot of uh, volume about the, the quality of hockey playing out of D side and the coaching, really. You know, and um, we've had a number of players, not too many, but, you know, uh, we've had a, a number of players come in, in and out of the England uh, conference and even GB set throughout the years. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. I think the key is to try and keep hold of these players, you know, because obviously they want to go on to bigger and better things. And that's normal and that's natural. But, you know, hopefully we can maybe hold on to, to some of these lads until the time is right for them to move on and maybe go for Premier League or, mm. or whatever it is. Yeah. And a bit of a focus on the actual season itself now. There was a pretty tough start for the first half. Mm. What would you think were the main factors for that tough leading up to Christmas time? Yeah, pre-season training really, um, pre-season training like I said we struggled to assemble the squad together um, we wanted to, to start the, the fitness programme and we just couldn't get the commitment from a lot of the players. Um, we did try to make some signings but um, again we couldn't get that commitment from the guys to, to sign on the dotted line and uh, I, I'm pretty sure we were we were in September and um, it was looking really doubtful whether we'd even have a squad this year mm -hmm. due to um, interest from other clubs for our, uh, you know, a lot of our players. So um, I think it did impact on on the investment in the in the team, investment in the players, and um, definitely I think it was something like the first five games we went um, and we were, we lost them all because we just um, were so behind the other teams with our fitness, with our plays and systems and stuff. So. Um, it has took us a while to, to get to where we are now, but um, I think over recent weeks, especially with the turning point being round about the Christmas period, we've uh, seen um, a vast improvement in our hockey and um, performance. I think um, possibly we, we started to, to pick up which guys were playing better with certain guys. I know Thomas, um, the import, we were playing with no imports again last last season. We had um, Pete Gazda who moved on, so at the beginning of the season we were playing with no imports. And then Thomas came into the, the mix around about the Christmas period, I think it was. And, and that was quite a, quite a good energy boost for us as well, you know. Um, and I, th I think um, when you you got imports into your teams, that just picks the rest of the guys up, you know. So um, I think that was quite a turning point for us. If I'm going to relate it to games, the turning point was Telford, where um, the lads went to Telford and, and got a draw there. And um, I think we went, we went there... In a, in, with not having the best training session in the week, we were missing guys, we were guys injured or on holiday, so everyone had to just pull together and then we got the got a point out of that game, which was good, and uh, we've started to pull together from there. I think we went to Coventry and we were losing 3-1 and come back to tie that game 3-3, mm -hmm. so yeah, there was definitely um, a unity mm -hmm. between the team um, during that Christmas period. Mm -hmm. Any standout players for D-side in your eyes this season? <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's been a few really and um, I think um, I was we were on the coach back uh, from Blackburn yesterday and I was speaking to James and uh, was looking at who was the top scorer and James Parsons is the top scorer for us and he, he's, he's kind of one of these lads that you can forget about really because you've got the likes of Chris Jones out there who can get on there full of energy, score score goals. You've got Paul Davis out there again full of energy. And Snipper seems to just be consistent across the board. He just gets on with his job. He's he's never any uh, never any problems and uh, you know, he, he works hard for the team. So um, I think um he's put in a really good performance for for the for the team this year. Mark Lovell seems to be a player that's been consistent all season. What's it like having a player of his experience with this, with, with yeah. a lot with the youth players as well? Yeah, and and again, Mark's a D side lad. Um, you know, there's there's if we're looking at 
lads that have been into the England setup, Mark's one of them. You know, there's not too many players in in this league who can say they've they've um, played in the elite league, played in the Premier League. Um, you know, when he was playing for Manchester, I think he went and scored two goals in in uh, Belfast. You know, there's not too many players that can can say that. So, uh, you know, he's he's strong. There's he's really strong out there. He skates skates harder, and he's a leader for us. And we're very fortunate to have a player like Mark Lovell. Mm-hmm. Um, in the in uh, in our club because there's a lot of clubs there that would love to have a Mark level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looking forward to next season. What do the Dragons need to do over the summer to move forward? I think we need to learn by our mistakes, really. You know, so um, the first year we learned that we need to bring youth through. Um, I think this year, over what's happened, we need to learn that we need to have a, a very good um, pre-season program. Guys need to commit, and we need to prepare ourselves going into the season and not um, react to what's going on, but actually be proactive. So that's what I'm hoping for this year. Have a break, but then let's get some plans in place and um, let's be ready to go come September. Thanks, Steve. Gary and Dave, back to you. Thanks for that, Kate. And as Steve Fellows has just said, they're, um, the D Side Dragons have been in development for the last season. It's vital that any team has a good youth programme to make it work. We've got to give a shout out now to the uh, staff at Deeside Leisure Centre who've worked tirelessly through the night tonight to make sure that we've got a game here. Um, the game was almost called off last night, there was a problem with the, uh, with the ice plant. So great to see that we're able to actually play a game tonight, so well done to the guys. Final word on this game, it's been a slow start to the season for the Dragons as Steve Fellows pointed out. They got into the season far too late but expect them to go out all guns blazing here tonight. What do you say, Gary? Well, I think it's time to uh, drop the puck. Face-off is won by the Dragons, and that's sent around the boards. Austin gets it clear, and Thompson for the Senators. And to cross ice to John Bell. Stopped by Fernable, who gets it to Lovell. And he plays it back to Stephen Fellows, Dragons coach who we spoke to earlier. He's going to play it out front. To Austin down the wing. Skates it in. Loses it along the boards. As Thompson gets it clear and it's with the Senators. Collision between Furnival and number 44, Joseph Colton. Jones keeps that in for the Senators. Bell fans on the shot and Fellows recovers. It's a Timitric who's tied up with McEwen. Fellows shot, Ooh. hits the leg. Davis keeps it in. Mitrick to Davis. Nice oh, pressure. Shit. It's a goal! Goal for Paul Davis and the D side Dragons. That's and they're a, on the board early. That's exactly what you need right now. A nice early start by the Dragons. Face-off is won by the Senators. Lovell recovers in the corner, gets it to Fellows. Off the boards, it's stopped by McEwen at the point. Keeps it in. But it's on to Fellows. Stick. Jones turns it back the other way. Shot. Stopped through traffic. Jones has it again. Around the back of the boards, Kenny Williams. Almost clears it. McEwen turns it back the other way, but a poke by Austin gets it out to center ice. Dumped in and Fellows gets it to Austin. To Furnival, shot, and it's a goal! D side Dragons, number 23, Simon Furnival is on the board. And the D side are really putting on the pressure in the first five minutes of this game. And if you are Robert Brown, the netminder for Sheffield, what are you thinking at this point? Lovell wins that face off. Gets it to Bryn Roberts. Keeps it in. Lovell has the puck. To Bryn Roberts, back to Lovell. And Parsons. Lovell just taking his time now. And this is 
what we heard the Dragons were focusing on and training their power play unit. They're doing a good job so far. Lovell brings it back in. Gonna take it in himself and it's a goal! Power play goal for Mark Lovell. His dad shouting on the sideline there must have made some impression because unbelievable goal. <laughs> Just kept hold of the puck, skated it in at his own leisure, and a nice quick wrist shot. Just beats the keeper. 3 0 D side. <laughs> Sheffield win that. Ray with a shot. He's wide. Kept in. The Dragons. Trying to clear desperately now as Lofthouse has it. It's around the boards. Fellows tries to clear. Kept in by Lewis. Shot. And Fellows again gets it to Austin who tries to chip it out. But it's kept in. Sheffield keep up the pressure. Kenny Williams to Furnival. Venable and Gray exchanging hits now and we've got a fight broke out and it's been broken up pretty quickly Cy Furnival and Martin Gray Mitrick Gets it to Mike Jones. Parsons keeps up the pressure, but Gent and Ross turn it round. Ross in the corner. Squashed there by Bryn Roberts. He brings it back the other way. Poked away from him there. Britain in the far corner. And Davis turns it round. Mitrick goes for it, but Jäger off. Has the puck and gets a cross ice, but there's nobody there. Bryn Roberts plays it behind his net. To Mitrick. Who gets it? Up front to Davis. He couldn't get a shot. Sheffield took away that passing lane. Mitrick in the corner. To Kennedy at the point. Shot. And that's out to center ice. Mike Jones gets it to Davis who just chips it in. Jäger off to Gent. Plays it the other way. Tries to turn around there but he's boarded. It's a turnover for the Dragons and Jones with a shot and it's a goal! Chris Jones! Face off is won by the Sheffield Senators. Around the back of their net. Andrew McEwen. Stopped by Bryn Roberts shot. It's wide. Gavin Austin's got it. Get, plays it back to Lovell. Another shot. And it's a goal! Another goal for D-side. Mark Lovell. And I think it's time for Sheffield Senators to reevaluate their position in this game. My goodness. What a shock scoreline so far. But like you said earlier, Dave, history has said that they have a great second period. Are they going to put more points on the board? Lovell wins that face off, but there's not a man there for it. Williams chases Britain. And it's cleared to center ice. Sheffield have it in their own zone. But they give it away to Austin. Tried to get it on net. Britain 
cross ice pass to McEwen. It's taken away by Austin again. Shot, oh, and dude. it's a goal! Gavin Austin! Two nice giveaways to Austin, and he finally gets it in there. Nice little play by Austin there, stealing that puck right under the nose of the centre to play. And then all the time in the world just to set himself up. If at first you don't succeed, try again. That's what Austin did, and he gets it in. Dave, you got to pinch me. Set. Decide Dragon 6 0 up. Am I dreaming? I think you just might be. Thompson shot is wide. Sheffield looking noticeably fired up, but Davis skates it in to Parsons. Goal! James Parsons just gets it in. And the Dragons are up. Another goal. 7 0 at the nine minute mark of the second period. And this is just unreal. This, I am definitely dreaming here, Dave. Timeout should call by Sheffield, and it, I think it's come seven goals too late, Gary. Uh, I think it has. They've got to be, they've got to be looking at themselves now and, and saying, "Hang on a minute, guys. We're a team that's in third place here. We're, in, we're going in the playoffs. Let's have a bit of credibility." Sheffield, clear it. Bryn Roberts couldn't keep it in. Turned round. Parsons plays it in. Great. Just chips it out. Roberts goes back for that. Sniper takes out number 25, Paul Lofthouse. As Lovell plays it in. Looking for a man at the point. Bryn Roberts shot. Oh. Parsons has it behind the net. Gets it out front. Another nice attempt there from Mark Lovell. Davis turns it round. Gets it to Parsons. Wrap around, no. Pucks loose. Lofthouse gets it to a man. On the boards. Mike Jones can't keep that in. Towler. And it's lost to Kennedy. To Lovell. Lovell's going to skate it in. Drops it back to Kennedy. Manages to stave off the Sheffield defence. Is there a man up front? Hallett Roberts. Sheffield tried to clear and do. It's back down to the Dragons' end. Chris Jones gives it to Sheffield though. Compton has his blocker down and keeps all of that. But now we've got some fireworks as Chris Jones. And Gary, it's as we said, a brilliant second period for the Dragons. As we've seen all season on Drop the Puck. It littered with penalties as always, but uh, I mean, if I was a betting man coming into this game tonight, I would have put money on Sheffield being the dominant side and Deeside being the one spending most of the time in the penalty bin. It's been completely the opposite. What a shock. Dragons. Shot and it's in, it's a goal. Straight from the face off. And that's set the bar early in the third period for this makeshift netminder. Face off to Sheffield. Mauer. Gets it to Jones. And Mike Jones clears. Chris Jones dumps it in. Around the boards, back out. The Dragons at centre ice. And Sheffield 
without their top scorer for the game and now without their netminder. It's a uh, tough game, tough loss for them. Kennedy shot and another goal. Ross Kennedy through traffic. Britain plays it back the other way. Stops in the corner to Molnar. Davis back the other way. Nobody to his wing. Sheffield tried to get it to centre ice. Passes to Jones. Ends up dumping it in. Davis chased down by McEwen in the corner. Lofthouse has it. Plays it round the board to Mitrick. Keeps it. Who can he get it to up front? That's Molnar. Who skates it back the other way. Drops it back. Sheffield just looked pretty defeated at this point. As the Dragons have had such a confident game. Davis dumps that puck in. Bell turns it round. McEwen poked by the Dragons Aaron Bell Chris Jones he's in, shot Alan That's Roberts 10. gets a goal it's number 10 for the D-side Dragons courtesy of Alan Roberts Meadows down the middle dumps it on net Alan Roberts plays it round the back can he get it out front, shot Goaltender keeps that out. Out front to Chris Jones, shot. That's a save. But another try. Oh, well Trickles done. out front. Sheffield. Hurst clears to Rob Johns. And we're seeing some Sheffield players we haven't seen much of this game. As Kennedy gets it around the boards. Roberts just dropped there. Meadows, but McEwen keeps that in. Shot. Goaltender keeps that out. Lovell behind the net. Gets it out front to Jones. But it's turned over. Shot. Oh. And it's a goal for Yegorov. Sheffield are finally on the board. And I guess the pressure's off now for Maddie Compton. To Yegorov, the goal scorer. Poked away at the line. Mauer to Yegorov. The fellows behind his net. Tip round to Gavin Austin. Nice chip cross ice to Furnival. He's just going to dump it on net. Shot. And it's in. It's a goal for Gavin Austin. Lovell wins that. Jones shot. Bell tries to clear. Mike Jones keeps it in. Davis to Bryn Roberts. Shot. And a goal. Bryn Roberts puts another... Point on the board for D-side. As Lofthouse returns to the bench. So with 10 minutes left in this game, it's Dragons 12, Senators 1. Turns it round, shot. Almost gets a rebound as well. McEwen goes back for that, but he's being chased by Parsons. Plays it in front of his net. Will he give it to Yegorov? No, chooses to skate it in himself. Deeks past Mike Jones and a shot, and it's a goal for Andrew McEwen. Chose to keep hold of the puck there rather than give it to his line mate, and it paid off. Lofthouse loses that to the Dragons. 
Jones around the neck gets it to Parsons. Who clears to center ice. Davis skates for it though, he's got it. Fans on the shot. Backhands it behind the net. Sheffield scramble for the puck. Roberts keeps it in at the point. Shot is wide. Mike Jones at center ice. Dragons get back on side. Bryn Roberts chips it in on net. Williams in the corner for it. Behind the Dragons net is Williams who tries to clear. Sheffield keep it in. Lofthouse shot. Tried to chip it out. Davis has it. Plays it. To Parsons shot. Oh, it's and it's in. a goal for James Parsons. Congratulations on promotion. Thanks very much, yeah, it's been a long old season and uh, we set ourselves a target of top four at the start of the year and we've, uh, we've exceeded that. Um, unfortunately, picked up a few injuries towards the back end of the season, which isn't really going to help us going into next weekend, but it's, uh, it's been a real good achievement and next year we get to go and test ourselves against the top teams in, uh, in the north. So, be a busy summer, no doubt, but uh, ready for the challenge next year. Speaking of injuries, um, sadly one of your players suffered look, what looked like quite a serious injury. Can we do a check on him, please? Uh, yeah, Josh uh, took a hit on the wall, and um, it looks like he's yeah, might have a fracture of his uh, of his leg. So, unfortunately, it looks like he's going to be out. He's our second top point scorer, so doesn't help for the playoffs. And also, our top point scorer is uh, actually away. So, yeah, we we make it difficult for ourselves, but we're going to keep working like we did it, like we did tonight. We never gave up for the full 60 minutes. Even when things went against us, we kept going, and that's what we got to do next weekend. We send our best wishes to him. Uh, looking forward to next season, obviously, the Moral League Conference. What plans have you got for the team? Um, I'd like to try and keep the core of the team together. I know there's areas where we need to improve. Um, I've, I've got my sights on a few players that I'd like to try and recruit, but we're a pay-to-play team, and it's very difficult to attract top players when they can go and play at the likes of D-side or Blackburn or Widness and either play for free or get a bit of spending money out of it. So, you know, we we do recruit uh, to the best of our means and we'll just try and compete the best we can. Good luck in the playoffs and thank you. Thanks very much. Lol, talk me through that game. It was a fantastic end to the season. Uh, great spectacle for the fans. But probably as far as the Dragons hockey goes, it was um, a bit too little too late, wasn't it? After the turbulent season we've had. I noticed that you made a lot of notes in your programme, about, particularly about the season. Where do you think the high points have been? Well, let's start on the low points first. I mean, the low points are we've lost more games than we've won. Um, home games, this has been a bastion and we've played really well at home. Away, um, we haven't played too good. Um, after the Telford game, we were a different team, which is about nine games back now. Um, the, the players had a meeting. We'd lost three on the run, um, all the staff had a meeting and basically um, we decided to change the strategy a little bit and make it a little bit easier um, with the dump and chase policy we've got now. We changed our trap a little bit and we certainly changed the, um, the penalty kill because um, seven games before that we conceded 20 goals um, on, in seven games on a penalty kill um, and we've only con conceded two in the last seven games. So that's worked. The lads have stepped up. But like I said in my programme notes, um, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And with the philosophy we brought, you know, um, the lads had to buy into it. And basically, um, it's took 50%, 60% of the season before they bought into it. And it's a shame because a performance like that tonight um, showed what we could have achieved. And your high points, uh, you talked about particularly the game at Telford, the Solihull games recently. Yeah, yeah we, we, what we say is, I mean, if we, if we get beat 10-0 by a team, we walk away and we say we've been beaten 10-0 by, by, by a good side. If we're getting beaten 2-1 or 6-5 by Solihull, it's not just down to skill, it's down to heart and determination and pride. And that's something we lost because at the start of the season we lost the first five games. We didn't prepare right, we had a, a short 
Um, season starts, you know, the league was so big, 38 game season, and, and of course, um, we failed to prepare, and, and, and at the end of the day, that's, that's come back and bit us, and we were playing catch up all season. Well, fair play to the lads, they've really come, come through, and, and the last, I would say, after the Telford game, they've really come through well. Looking forward to next season, have you got any plans for D-side to take them forward next year? Well, we don't know who's going to be in the league next year. There's rumours Leeds are going to be in the league, there's rumours Blackpool are going to be in the league. I mean, Witness, I don't think Witness will beat Whitley Bay, but good luck to Witness. So Witness will probably be in our league. If we keep this team together, I know we're going to lose Jack Meadows, we're going to lose Bryn, um, maybe a couple of others. Um, we get another import, we drastically need another import. Um, there's no reason we can't win the league next season. Lol, thanks very much for talking to us and good luck. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Keith. Mike, what a season it's been. A lot of ups and downs. It was a tough start to the season, but Dragons have really picked it up. Uh, since then and a uh, fantastic game tonight. Oh definitely, it's always great to uh, end on a high like that. Um, this year is always going to be a transition year, losing so many key important players. Okay, We've blooded a lot of uh, juniors in, um, so it took a, a few months to get going and, and get the systems right and the team flowing, so it's just a shame that we've got all this momentum at the end of the season really, uh, but if we take positives from it, then uh, we build on it from next year. What would you say was the turning point of this season for you? For some reason, it was the, the uh, Telford away game. Um, I think guys were just fed up of losing, and we just all got together and just said, "Look, let's just do our best, to see out the season, see what we get from it." And, um, and that attitude, you know, no, no worries attitude, has just got us with the results and worked really hard. And you know, we run solid or close, who have just walked away with the league. We, you know, we ran close every game. There's been no washout since then, and we've got some some fantastic results. We lost three times to Sheffield this year, and then we're going beat him 12-2 or whatever it was just then so do you, uh, do you not regret showing this kind of performance early on in the season because you had that quite congested period at the first part of the season just coming into Christmas and it was a little bit detrimental you were you were pretty much in the in the running for a bit but you had too many games close together do you think if you'd have been performing like this oh definitely you know um, over the Christmas period th this league you know they shouldn't have games over Christmas because guys can't commit you know when it's high level they can go to the gym, they can work out, they can get on the ice. You know, when, when you've got Christmas in the way and the rink's closed and, you know, it's hard to play on the 27th, then on New Year's Day and stuff like that. It's, it's not fair on the lads, you know, we, we've got work and, and commitments and family commitments and stuff like that. So it, it was tough over that period and we, we lost a few games where we should have really won and it kind of stuttered our season then, really. So if, you, if there's somebody interested in coming along, getting involved in a team like these uh, Dragons, what would you suggest to them? Oh, just get on the ice as much as you can. Um, the junior club's really thriving at the moment. We have novice night on Friday nights, I think it is, and it's absolutely packed on there. The kids are just loving it. Okay, they, they, they come down, just have a get on the ice, and they're just absolutely loving the game of hockey. And then that's just great. The more kids we get on the ice, the more it, it improves in the future. Then. Cool, cool. Big question is, are we going to see you next year? Um, I'd like to think so. Um, Commitment, like family commitments and um, work commitments, all dependent. But um, I'd like to be back as, as a dragon and, and playing again next year, uh, just to build on the, the successes what we're doing the last couple of months. Um, I'm a senior player now. I've got a lot of experience from the, the teams I played at. Um, I just want to share that with all the guys and uh, on the, especially the younger ones and, and help blood them through until. And then when I do end up retiring, then they can continue then and help out the dragons. It's been a uh, nice chat to you, Mike. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Bryn, what a game to finish your time here. Yeah, definitely. Are you looking forward to your return to Canada? Yeah, I am, of course. Like it's been, I've been waiting a while now, and I think it's time to go. And have you got any plans for playing ice hockey while you're over there? Um, I'm probably going to have a year out, just trade. Well, just train at the rink there, get myself in better shape, and then just see what happens afterwards. And the finish today, a few goals on, on the air, on the mark for you. Yeah, it was all right there. Yeah, well, they put the player goal in, fair play to him, stepping up there for his team, jumping in the net. He did, he did really well, to be fair to him. What will you miss about D-side? Everything, really. This is where I learned how to play. This is where I grew up. This is where I started. And it's just nice to finish here. All my, all my best mates, my brother. It's just been a good time. Good luck and well done. Thank, Thank you very you. much. 
Mark, the end of another uh, tough season for D-side. Uh, what do you take away from this? I think the last the last couple of months, since the Telford away game, we we drew there, and then we since then we have played really good hockey. And to be honest, if we played like that, how we finish the season? If we'd started like that and been continuous all year like that, I think we'd be going to Solihull for the playoff weekend. To be honest, so that is. That is a downside because we know how good we can play because we proved tonight, but at least we're finishing on a strong note. That is a positive and the last couple of games, to be honest, have been really good and we've all worked hard, so that is a positive note to take into next season. What, are you going to do, what have you got to do to uh, to get going for next season? What's the plan? I think probably pre-season, maybe get a few friendlies in on pre-season and just, I think we just need to be ready to go. This season we weren't, we weren't ready, the team was, we had new players coming in, we lost a lot of players. Which, I mean, it's no excuse, but... It mucked things up a bit, but I think we just need to make sure we start well, because the first five games were... I won't swear, but they were poor. <laughs> we, need to, uh, we need to start start well and then continue it on all season, I think. Tonight's performance was something of a bit of a shocker. Most people will probably look at it for them and said, OK, Sheffield going into the playoffs, got third spot, guarantee the win there at the side. The result tonight, completely different. What do you put it down to? I don't know really, I think it's just, maybe tonight we just didn't play with we any pressure. It's the weekend off baby! <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. I think I think that just goes to show tonight. Tonight we played probably with no pressure, a bit of fun, and just and just went out and probably maybe that's where we need to start the season off. Play so that we don't feel pressure or play so we've all got a smile on our face and we'll hopefully we'll play like that every you game. You certainly got under their skin quite early on and with the three goals you took into the going into the second period. Historically we pointed out that your second periods here have been fantastic, you've really done well. Yeah. So how could somebody like Sheffield come out in the third period and, and try and battle back when they're 7-0 down? So to, to be honest, I don't think I don't even think they wanted to come out in the third. I mean, I know they swapped goalies and they had a player had to go in, but I don't think that would have made a difference. I think the first two periods we just killed them off completely, and I don't think I think they come here expecting to be a bit of a walk in the park to them. To be honest, because they they're going the playoff weekend and they have had a good season. And I was quite surprised with how they played tonight, but I just don't think they expected us to come and play with the heart we did tonight, which is we're just too strong for them. A good performance by all. Yeah, it was very good performance. Very Cheers, good. Mark. Thanks no for worries. joining us, and we'll catch you next season. Thanks very much for the Cheers. work. Thank Cheers. Thanks very, thanks very much. much. Hello, James Parsons. Hello, Chris. How come and take a seat over here. Uh, Mike, come and have a seat. Love all. Come on. Oh. This is messed up already. Hi, I'm Chris Jones from D-Side Dragons. I'm sat here with James Parsons and Mike Jones. Paul sat there in the back trying to get some air time. How do you think this uh, season's gone, James? Uh, you know, we've had a few ups and downs. Um, started off uh, very bad. Carried on very bad. And then after Christmas, we got good and carried on winning. And then a few, a few losses, but yeah. It's and what good. would you have given to have won this league? Me right arm. I'd have given me right arm. I'd have cut me arm. <laughs> And Mike, how do you think this season's gone? Oh, I think it's been a wild one. Uh, just unfortunately not wild enough. Um, but fifth place is good enough for us. We're, we're Bye, baby. Easter. Enjoy Easter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, here we are at the end of the game. As you can see, we've got all the players and fans milling behind us. It's the end of season party here at D-Side. And uh, what, a, what a wild season it's been. It's been a, it's been a really eventful season. And while Drop the Puck have been here at D Side Leisure Centre, we've had the pleasure of some really, really exciting games. We have the fans are milling around. <laughs> There's a man here. Am I, I going to be on telly? <laughs> 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 Commanding performance there, I think. Uh, it's fair to say D Side had that sewn up from the early going. Well, it's a shame um, that we were talking to Steve Fellows earlier when Kate was uh, interviewing him, and he, he hit on the point the fact that. This side struggled at the very early start of the season. If this kind of performance was shown at that point when it came into the season, yeah. what a different season we'd have been looking at. We'd have been looking at D side now fighting in the playoffs. 
How hard is it going to be now for Sheffield? They're going to go into the playoffs. They've got a goaltender injured. They've got one of the star players injured. That's got to hurt. They're certainly going to be licking their wounds after that. And, and they've got to take stock of what's happened tonight and, and certainly rethink and reshape themselves ready for the playoffs. Don't forget, this isn't the end for Drop the Puck, though. We're going to be back next week. The season may be over at D-side, but we've got a few more games left in the bag for you. We're going to have the Solly Hall Barons Coventry Blaze game here next week, the first of a double header for them. And coming up later on in the month, we've got the NIHL playoffs. Of course we have. All exciting games, all for you at home. We want to thank everybody who's been part of Drop the Puck this season, from all the staff here at D-Side, from all the uh, guys who help run the rink, the players, the fans, everybody's been fantastic. Thanks to all the away teams who've taken part, who've been interviewed, who've uh, helped us out with the filming. They've been instrumental in getting this off the ground. Can't say, can't say better things about it. And of course, the most important people are you, the viewers at home. <laughs> That's a cheesy line, but yeah, I'll allow that. <laughs> Thank you everybody who's been part of Drop the Puck. There's still more stuff coming at the end of the season. Don't worry, we've got three more episodes left in us, hopefully. Uh, but this is the end of us doing our live coverage at D-Side this season. Thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you're following us on Facebook. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. We're going to be back with more games here next year. Start of the season, September. And we've got some other exciting projects coming up in the meantime. Make sure you're joining us. Make sure you're there as well. And we'll see you next season.